Are you suffering from deep vein thrombosis or just want to know more about it? Then let's take a look in to see how Jenny was diagnosed with DVT. Hi, my name is Jenny. A few weeks ago, I went for a business trip to Australia. I came back to Canada after a 14-hour flight, and then the next day I went to work. I realized that my leg was swollen, it was red, and there was excruciating pain. I decided to take some Advil because I thought an anti-inflammatory would help, but it did not help. So I decided to go to the emergency. Upon arrival, they suspected that it was a DVT. As we just saw, Jenny has been diagnosed with deep vein thrombosis. But what is deep vein thrombosis? Within the deep veins of your leg, a clot forms causing deep vein thrombosis. So instead of blood moving freely within the venous valve of your leg, a clot forms causing improper blood flow. DVT is correlated with risk factors such as an increase in age, minor surgeries, restricted mobility of the leg due to trauma, and individuals who are overweight are more prone to developing DVT. The most common symptoms an individual may experience in DVT as depicted by Jenny are pain and swelling in the lower extremities. This can include ankle and calf edema. As you can see in the diagram to your right, the blood clot causes the vessels to rupture, leaking fluid into the nearby tissue. In a physical examination of a patient, signs of DVT include edema, which is swelling of extremities such as your ankle and your calf, warmth, tenderness, redness, cyanosis, which is bluish skin, and superficial venous dilation. So let's hear more about DVT from a thrombosis expert, Dr. Shannon Bates. So my name is Shannon Bates. I'm a physician. Um, I was trained as a hematologist. I specialize in thrombosis, which is treatment and prevention of blood clots. I work both at the Jurovinsky Hospital and at McMaster Medical Center. What is the main molecular mechanisms or pathway involved in DVT? So thrombosis, we commonly think of um, Virchow's triad to help explain how thrombosis occurs. And so the three components of that are venous stasis, so blood is not moving, hypercoagulability, so for whatever reason it's particularly clotty, and then the third thing is um, damage to the vascular wall. So I can give you examples of each. So venous stasis might occur if you had a tumor, for example, that was blocking flow of blood up from the leg, up back to the, to the lungs and to the heart, then that might cause a problem. Um, vascular damage could occur with surgery. So for example, if you had vascular surgery, had surgery where they wanted to put a tourniquet around your leg, then that might damage the lining of the blood vessels. And then changes in clotting factors can occur during pregnancy or when you take the pill, or even with other diseases like cancer, for example. As Dr. Bates mentioned, the Virchow's triad is made up of three factors that lead to clot formation, hypercoagulability, vascular injury, and venous stasis. Hypercoagulability refers to a blood disorder that causes the blood to be very thick or viscous, and this leads to a higher chance for an individual to form blood clots. Sometimes, when an individual injures their leg, this leads to endothelial damage, which is damage to the thin layer of cells that line our blood vessels. This leads to a loss of clot-preventing mechanisms and also increases the chance for clot formation. In this video, we won't be discussing hypercoagulability or vascular injury, but we will look into how venous stasis leads to DVT. Venous stasis is when an individual has improper blood flow. If an individual is immobile for too long, then they will have a high chance of blood not flowing properly. Sometimes during a long car ride or a plane ride, you might not get adequate blood flow to the legs and this can lead to the formation of a blood clot. Like I mentioned before, when an individual is immobile for a long period of time, there is an improper blood flow to the leg. This causes hypoxia, which means that the tissues in the legs do not get enough oxygen, causing tissue damage. Hypoxia increases the expression of tissue factors. These tissue factors are responsible in initiating the process of clot formation. The tissue factor binds to a group of clotting factors and causes a cascade of events that activate fibrin. Fibrin is a key substance in a clot formation and acts like a glue to stick platelets together, ultimately forming the clot. Now that we have seen the mechanisms of DVT, let's look and see how DVT can be treated. 
So deep vein thrombosis is treated in a couple of ways. The most common way to treat deep vein thrombosis is with anticoagulant therapy. So what anticoagulant therapy does is it keeps your body from making new clot and then your body will slowly break the clot down. Um, so those are not clot busters. So for the longest time, the only blood thinner we had was something called Warfarin or the, the brand name would be Coumadin. And so that's a pill and it um, inhibits the formation of vitamin K dependent clotting factors. The problem with warfarin is that it's very sensitive to different drugs, it's sensitive to diet, and there's a lot of variability over time um, in how it's metabolized. So people need to have blood work on a regular basis and they need to have a test called an INR checked and you have to keep that INR within a certain range so that you know that the person's on the right dose of blood thinner or warfarin to prevent clotting but that their blood's not so thin that they're at risk of bleeding. So you can see how that would be really onerous if you were on um, blood thinners for an extended period of time. So recently a group of anticoagulants called the direct oral anticoagulants have been developed, studied and released and are now widely used. And these two, these this group of blood thinners, they either work on inhibiting factor two or thrombin or inhibiting activated factor 10A. So some examples of the drugs that you might have heard of are dabigatran or Pradaxa or the anti-10A ones are Apixaban or Eliquis, Rivaroxaban or Xarelto or Edoxaban or Lixiana. So now that we've seen the various treatments for deep vein thrombosis from a thrombosis expert, let's check in with Jenny and see how she was treated for DVT. So after they completed a bedside ultrasound, they realized that I did have a DVT. They treated me with Lovenox, a direct anticoagulant, and after a few days, the swelling and the pain had gone down. After a few weeks, I returned to the thrombosis clinic for some follow-up appointments. After that, I was fine and now I'm okay. Thank you for watching. For more videos like this, check out the Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel.